So who's up for a little sock talk? Hello everyone, welcome to the Earth Tones Girl podcast. My name is Denise and this is Earth Vlog number 55. So happy to be here with you all today. Um, you can find me on the web as Earth Tones Girl. I am most active on Instagram, also on Ravelry. The podcast has a Ravelry group, the Earth Tones Girl podcast group, and there is also an email address, earthtonesgirl at gmail.com. I also have a website, earthtonesgirl.com. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back. Okay, it's been a month. No apologies necessary, I know. I'm not going to apologize. Not quite. <laughs> uh, I'm just so surprised at how fast that was. Um, oh my gosh, four weeks, that's crazy. I uh, My goal, and I, I felt like I was doing relatively well was to come every week to every two weeks and then all of a sudden March just disappeared. It was crazy. There was so much going on with the kids at school and um, yeah, there's a little speed bump in March for me personally, but you know, I'm, I'm past it. It's all good. Um, but here I am. I'm here now. So let's talk socks, everybody. I have not been here to chat with you all, but I have been knitting and re-knitting and ripping and taking notes and doing all kinds of things it's been oh and i also taught that was the other big thing <laughs> like it's how can i forget i also taught with vogue knitting live it was my first time back with them since last november november of 2020 so just getting back into the swing and getting samples ready and and getting notes ready and outlines and everything because I tweaked and changed a few things. So it's it's been a really busy month. Uh, there's just been a lot going on. But all of that said, between prepping for Vogue and then also um, working on new not new patterns, but just new to me sock combinations and the sock exploration. Thank you, Mars, if you're watching for that lovely um, title for all of this. Uh, in the last episode, I talked about doing a sock intensive. And so many of you came up with other words for it, which was really, really great. Um, a sock intensive. And then I posted about it on Instagram. And Mars, who is Hey Brown Berry, she called it a sock exploration. And I thought, yes that's it. <laughs> that is what we're going to call it. So um, I have been enjoying my time in that rabbit hole and I have three samples to show you. Um, one was a fail. We're going to start with the fail, but I'll get to that in a second. One, well, I shouldn't say fail. It just didn't work. And, I, and I'll explain why in a minute. I have a an FO, so a finished pair of socks. And then I also have a half finished object, a hoe. Um, so I'm going to share all of that with you. And I've just started with a new book. So there's a lot to cover. But as always, I don't want my episodes to be terribly long. So here we go. Um, oh my gosh. Okay. So yes, last episode, Sock Exploration. It has been so much fun exploring all of these new or different sock heels. Um, some are new to me, some I've seen for a really long time, just never knit before. Uh, one was completely new to me. A viewer here on the podcast had suggested um, a heel and I decided to, again, go down the rabbit hole. And uh, I've watched the video a few times and then finally decided to give it a try. Wait until I talk about that one because I'm so excited to talk about it. Um, I did mention it in the last, just briefly in the last episode as well. And um, Oh my gosh, just, okay, I don't even know where to begin. Let's let's talk about Vogue for one second. Um, that was really, really fun. And I taught a heel flap and gusset. My, my, it was, it's the No Fear Sock Knitting class, and I will be teaching that again. Uh, some of you weren't able to get into the class, and I will be teaching it again in this month, April. 
It is April 5th right there. Uh, yesterday was Easter for those of you that celebrate. Uh, belated Happy Easter, Happy Passover if you celebrate. Um, I hope your spring is off to a good start. But so I, for Vogue, it's the No Fear Sock Knitting class and I um, decided to teach it in a slightly different way. I created a new tutorial here on the channel which was episode eight, I believe. And instead of knitting the heel flap and gusset in profile, I taught a way to knit it so that you don't have to rearrange your stitches. So you're knitting across half and then the first half and then the second half, and we put the heel in on the first half and keep your instep stitches on the second half uh, or first needle, needle one, needle two. And I taught that method at Vogue and it was, and I say at Vogue as if it were, it's not a real live event. It is, um, it is still virtual. Uh, so people, you can sign up wherever you are. You can go to Vogue's website and sign up. I will put a link in the description box for you down below. Uh, and there was a woman there from Greece. Like it was just, it's mind blowing how Vogue and that having that platform pulls everybody together from literally around the world. It just blows me away. So but all of that said, the class was really great. It was really, really good. I'm always a little nervous when I tweak things, whether it's going to be well received, whether I'm going to present it in a way that's understandable um, and concise enough. But it it really, it was successful. I was so happy about it. Um, there was one student who didn't who couldn't really get it and got a little frustrated. Um, and that's going to happen. It's going to happen. I wore a t-shirt um, for that class, uh, it's, it, the t-shirt is made or designed by Gigi, um, of Gigi made it on Instagram and it says it's not hard, it's new. And it really isn't hard. None of, I, in my experience, there's really nothing in sock knitting that is so hard that if with a little practice and patience, you can't get it. And, um, yeah, so I wore that t-shirt couple of people had a couple of moments, but they got it. One person was a little frustrated. If you're watching, um, I hope you sign up again or just follow along with the videos here and just give it a try. Um, yeah. So, okay. That was really fun teaching that in the new method. And it's funny because I talked about switching everything and in profile, I, I, I briefly mentioned it and everyone was like, oh, no way. <laughs> No, 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 no. This, this is, this is um, difficult enough to to learn. But everyone got it, so I was really, really happy about that. And uh, Vanessa, who is the crafty Gemini, she took the class, and that was such. I was fangirling like that was my fangirl moment because when I first became aware of the tutorials that were available on YouTube and you're talking a long time ago, um, there was Vanessa and I looked up to her and her videos were so great. And I thought, wow. And then she now signed up for a class with me and it was just like, oh my gosh, I'm not worthy. <laughs> um, actually it was kind of a Sally Field moment when she won an Academy Award way back when. And she's, uh, she says, you like me, you really, really like me. <laughs> So I just had a moment and it was really, really fun um, to have her in the class and a couple of other people that I have known and met on Instagram to have them in the class. So that was really fun. And then I did a um, sock knitting tips and tricks class, which was also really lovely. Uh, and I decided for this round for April to include a section on blocking. That question always comes up, but I didn't actually have it as part of the outline. So I've now edited that. So there's a little bit more information in that class going forward, which I'm really excited about. Uh, and then I also taught a mitten class, which was really, really great. That was really fun. Um, so yeah, it was really exciting. And again, I will be teaching in April. The dates are April 17th and 18th, which is Saturday and Sunday. I'm not teaching the mitten class, but the other two sock classes I am teaching. Um, and then also teaching in May, and I'm going to be coming up with a new class on sock heels for May. So stay tuned for that. I will definitely be giving you some more information as we get closer. So yeah, let's, let's jump right in and um, let's talk about some sock heels, guys. So I think there's a slight misconception when you watched podcast episodes that um, the podcaster 
or the teacher doesn't ever make a mistake. Um, wrong. <laughs> yes, we make mistakes. Yes, we try patterns and different things and it can be a complete mess or a fail if you want to call it that. And, um, or you know what? I just don't like it. And that's okay. One thing I've learned in this sock exploration is that, um, looking at a picture of a sock in a book, it's a staged, it's staged. So, you know, it's been blocked beautifully. It's, it's been photographed beautifully. It's been, you know, manipulated a little bit on the blocker, et cetera. Um, or even not on the blocker, just, just the way that the picture is laid out. So sometimes when you now take those instructions and work on them yourself, I work on them myself, um, it started out great. Everything was going great. And then snag. So first up is the, this is called, now I follow, I decided to go with the pattern. I didn't just knit the heel instructions. There is a pattern that includes this heel. So the book I'm referring to, um, once again, is the sock architecture book by Lara, by Lara Neal. And I cannot believe how many of you went out and bought it and sent me messages that you bought it and were, and are following along. I love that so much. We are sock explorers together. I love it. I love it. Um, so yeah, there is an actual pattern as you can oh my notes. <laughs> uh, I've got notebooks. I've got notes. I've got all kinds of things. And I'll talk about this in a sec. And, um, I always lose my train of thought. Yeah. So instead of just following the heel, what she does in the book is she has instructions for all of the specific heels, top down, toe up, and then different toes top down and toe up. But she also includes patterns which include those heels. So I thought for this particular one, it may be a little easier to just follow along with her numbers um, and give it a go. So, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause and put this on something. I have a different, just, I'll be right back. So I thought it would be easier to talk about these heels instead of using my standard, um, sock blockers. I usually use these. I think to really show the heel, I put out a call on Instagram to people um, looking for leg mannequins, like a, like a leg, like half of a leg, a leg mannequin. And um, so many people reached out to me. <laughs> it was really amazing. Um, I did find one on Amazon and then I found another one from uh, Mannequin Madness. So I'll, I'll show you all of those. I just think it's easier to talk and, and really display the heel when it looks a little bit more three-dimensional as opposed to flat. So first up is the bootstrap heel. And this pattern did come from sock architecture. And the heel itself, it's the bootstrap sock. It's the bootstrap sock with a, I'm looking, I'm looking here, with a Balbriggan heel or a band heel. I didn't like it. It was really interesting knitting it, and I loved the bootstrap effect, which looks like this. I'm gonna cover the heel for one second. So this is what it looked like, and this is my mannequin. I bought this one, you'll see in a second. It's got the little hook so I can hang it, um, but I, you'll see how much easier it is to show a heel when it looks a little three more three-dimensional. So now I have two of these with a third one coming. It's feast or famine with me, but I really loved the way the bootstrap, this bootstrap effect. So it starts here right in, right from the cuff and then goes into the heel and I'll show you the other side. There it is. So that's what it looks like. It's really great. But now here is the heel. So that bootstrap effect runs under the foot. What I didn't like is this. Can you all see that? This was so interesting to knit this portion in here. It was really, really interesting construction. It was really interesting to knit. I loved the effect of this band in here, but what happens in my experience, some of you may have knit this heel and it fits you really well. It was too shallow. I found the depth from here to here was just too shallow on my foot. It, it wasn't comfortable when I put it on. Also, there was pulling, let me turn it that way because I think you can see a little bit better. There was a little bit of pulling. The number of stitches that you had to pick up, I'll just pull this in, the number of stitches that you had to pick up in this area, this had to be grafted together. So you're knitting this portion, knitting this portion, you've knit this, 
you graft these two together and then you're picking up stitches along here and in theory it was great it was really interesting as I said really interesting to knit but it didn't fit really well and I found I actually found the instructions just in here it, it was it was difficult to pick up the correct number of stitches without getting a little bit of pulling and tugging right around here so again all of that added to yeah just the fact that I wasn't really thrilled with it is it a great heel for some people I'm sure that it is I just found it a little too shallow for me but and that's one of the reasons I didn't finish the sock I just thought you know what I'm gonna save this and use this as a sample as a teaching sample um but yeah the construction's amazing it's very very interesting just for my foot it didn't fit well it, it looks like it fits well here but when you put it on not only was I getting a lot of pulling across here in the instep again it was just too shallow and there's a lot of pulling in here I'm gonna show you the page so you see what it looks like in the um, in the book and you'll see what I mean Hang on, of course I don't have the page marked, just bear with me a second as I flip furiously. Do 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 do, no. Okay, here it is. Okay, so there's a little bit of pulling, now that I look at the picture again. So here it is, a little bit of pulling, as you can see. I found mine was pulling a little bit too much right across here. And when you look, here this was a lot cleaner in I found in the picture a lot cleaner in the picture than I was able to get the stitches picked up so just my experience sharing what I have discovered what I like what I don't like so that is the um, bootstrap sock with a bell brigand heel and I think it's also called of course I lost the page I should have just marked it uh, bootstrap heel or I think it's the band heel I'm not seeing that here but I think I read that somewhere that it was the band heel but it's Bill Bill Bal Brigham page 27 let me go there hang on a minute uh, yeah, Bal Brigham heel. And there's also, what's really cool about this too is she, um, Lara Neal also gives you a little, little tidbits of historical background on, um, on the heel, which is really, really cool. Um, yeah, maybe I have it mixed up with another one, but anyway, I'm sort of thinking out loud. Do I suggest, do I say don't try it? Absolutely not. Go for it. Go for it. Try it. Give it a try. It didn't really work out for me, but it really still is a great heel. Um, maybe for a child sock where it would be a little more shallow that you wouldn't need as deep of a heel. So that is my experience on that. And again, this uh, mannequin, this particular one, if anyone's interested, I bought from Amazon. I don't even remember what it cost, but it's really cool. You've seen these at trade shows and stuff like that from dyers, but here it is. So that is that heel. And you know what? And it may just have been knitter error. I, my, I don't, I try very hard not to have an ego with any of this. You guys, if my videos, tutorials, things don't work for you, there are so many more out there for you to try. My experience with this heel, it wasn't great for me. You may find another tutorial on it or find a tutorial on it or anyone discussing it and they sing its praises. So go out and explore, look for different things, try it yourself, try knitting it yourself and just see whether it works for you or doesn't work for you. Um, so now on to a success as I'm madly in love with this heel and I have it, I have this heel on a blocker as well as on another foot. Excuse me. So this one is um, my No Fear Shorty Sock Pattern. And what I've been doing, uh, what I plan to do is use that pattern and keep playing with different heels and um, heels and toes. I'm also working on a vanilla sock. I know I said this before, but when I get to the shadow wrap, I'll talk about that some more. But this one is the, this is now an Eye of Partridge. I'm looking at it. It's an Eye of Partridge heel flap with a Dutch 
aka square heel. Look at that. Oh, look at that, you guys. I'm hoping that it's centered on the camera. It is so pretty. There's something about an eye of partridge heel, heel flap that is just so interesting. It kind of has a slight honeycomb effect to it. There's so much texture in here. And I'm going to turn this inside out so you can see what the inside looks like. And then this heel down here, this is a Dutch heel right here. As you can see, it doesn't have that triangular effect. It is a square heel. And I'm going to show you what that looks like on the mannequin. There it is. Isn't that amazing, the difference when you look at these two? It really does help to see it more 3D on this than it does to see it here. You're not getting that full effect when you look at it here, which is why I bought these. <laughs> so this foot, um, this is actually a used mannequin foot uh, that Mannequin Madness, um, Judy, hi Judy, if you're watching, uh, that Judy, um, she is a, it's a female owned, a woman owned, black owned company. And when I put the call out on Instagram, she reached out to me and said that she had these and it is heavy. It is sturdy, you guys, and can stand completely on its own. This one, this other one also stands on its own, but it's, it's bigger. It's just a lot bigger. I, I really like this one a lot. Um, so yeah, it does bunch up in here, but really who cares? The point is not I don't care about that part. I really want to show the heels. So anyway, back to the heels. Sorry, talking about the mannequin. Um, so there it is. It is a square heel, also known, a Dutch heel known as a square heel. And look at that. Oh my goodness. Can you see? Look at how beautiful. So there, you're doing, you're picking stitches up right along here at the gusset, but all of your decreases are happening at this intersection here and here, right in here. It's really, really beautiful. You do not feel, so I know someone's gonna ask, do you feel the ridge on either side? You do not, you do not feel the ridge at all. It is, I've tried this on, I have the finished pair and I don't feel a thing. It's, it just feels like a regular sock on my foot. The fit, I felt like my foot, now when you're turning a heel, you are creating a pocket, but I felt like this heel had a, had more of a pocket, if that makes sense. So when I put it on, my foot really slipped in and was like snug and hugged in the heel. It felt, re it feels really, really good on my foot. And I mean, that eye of partridge, look at that. Oh my gosh. It's so, so, so pretty. I just love it so much. Ah, okay. So the instructions for this this was not, there is a pattern for this, but I just decided to plug it into my own No Fear Shorty sock. And I followed the instructions in sock architecture for the Eye of Partridge heel. And what's amazing, Lara Neal is just a genius. And what is incredible is she gives instructions for this heel flap over an even number of stitches and over an odd number of stitches. This is, I'm doing this over an even number, so there were 32 stitches but I love that she gives you the option for both. Sorry, a little earthquake there. Um, I love that you've got the option for both depending on your pattern. So if, you've, if you're working on a pattern and you decide you wanna edit or change it, um, put in a different heel flap, or you're just curious, it's a plain vanilla sock and you wanna play around with a different heel flap, she's done the work for you. So here it is. Love it. So I'm gonna rest that right there. Isn't that kind of cool? It sits perfectly. Oh, and I didn't even talk about the yarn. <laughs> um, it is Into the World. Tyler is the name of this colorway. And it is the Paco Pacoyo, Pacoco, Pacoco, Pacacu sock. You know what? I'm going to stop trying to pronounce it and I will just put it down below. <laughs> I will put it down, Philip, down below in the description box for you. Um, it is amazing yarn. It's really, really lovely um, tonal. It's just beautiful. I love this colorway so much. I just love this sock. And this sock blocker is by Knitting Left. If anyone's interested, um, I'm sure I'll get that question too. I will link down below. This is by Knitting Left, and it is. It, when I saw these, I thought how cute that it. It's a sock blocker for shorties. 
I have all of my other ones over here but I that are full length, but I love that this is a little shorty one. Let me pull this down so you can see with the little sheep. So cute. So, so cute. So there you go. There you have it. So let's put that there. I love that you can see that off in the distance there, in the background rather. Um, so yeah, and now I'm going to talk about one more heel. Oh my gosh. This one. Are you ready? Okay, let's do it. Okay, a while back, maybe more than a year, almost two years ago now, I created two tutorials, two sock tutorials um, for a heel flap and gusset and an afterthought heel. And I said I was going to do a third video, a part three, for a short row heel. Someone actually just recently reached out to me in the comments here um, asking where that video was. And I just, my response was I hadn't found a, he a short row heel that I liked enough to teach. And the one that I did fall in love with, I couldn't teach because it was copyrighted. So I have found one thanks to a viewer here who recommended that I try the, the shadow wrap heel. Shadow wraps are a type of short row heel that does not involve wrap and turns, and it doesn't involve the double stitch that you get in a German short row. This one is twin stitches and triplet stitches. Oh my gosh. My goal was to find a short row heel that was symmetrical, so both sides of the heel looked the same. So many knitters, I get comments from knitters, including my even my tech editor, who said she has knit German short row heels and she was wondering whether, she always thought it was her error that the two sides didn't match or that she was missing something. I'm like, no, they don't match because they don't match. It's not you. And this heel, this shadow wrap heel, the two sides are identical and beautiful. Here it is. Look at that. I mean, I, I really like this yarn too and the whole sock, but let's focus on the heel. That is a shadow wrap heel, everybody. One side and here's the other side. No holes, perfect mirror image. It looks like the knit stitches are literally kind of hugging a curve and you've got that on both sides. No holes, no spaces at the intersection. Love it. And the fit of this heel is amazing. I noticed that it's actually a little bit deeper. The way that you're knitting the heel kind of creates, as you can see, it's not sitting flush at the, at the back of the, um, the sock blocker. You've got about that much what I'm pinching. So maybe that's what, maybe a little more than a quarter, between a quarter and a half an inch. It is a nice, deep, deeply pocketed short row heel. So I didn't get any pulling on this instep on the heel at all. It fits perfectly. Love it, love it, love it. Will I be doing a tutorial for this? Yes, absolutely. I can't wait to teach this. So it looks very similar to a fish lips kiss heel in the symmetry. Um, in the actual knitting of it, some parts are different, but there are also major, major differences. And I found it a really easy heel to understand, to knit, and the fit is fantastic. So here it is, again, the shadow wrap heel. Love it. I just, oh my gosh, I could talk about this all day long. Absolutely love it. And this sock, I'm not answering that question. Let me answer that. This is by the, this yarn is the Cozy Knitter. If you're noticing that the light keeps changing, it is about five o'clock on Monday afternoon and the sun is just starting to come down in the sky here and everything in my backyard starts to turn kind of a yellowish color. So that's why you're seeing the light looking like that. So I apologize if that's distracting for anyone. Um, this is my friend Margaret is the name of this colorway and it is by The Cozy Knitter. I have the other one in progress all of the leg is done and I'm knitting the shadow wrap heel again. Uh, I'm actually, perfect segue, I 
am writing finally, finally, it is going to the tech editor this week, hopefully by tomorrow. <laughs> um, finally writing a full length vanilla sock pattern with a shadow wrap heel. So right now I'm working on writing out those instructions so that it's understandable. Um, so I'm, I've written it and now I'm following what I've written to see if it makes sense. It's going to go to the tech editor and then it will go out to testers. So um, yeah, that sounds like a really long process, but I don't think it's going to take very long because you don't really need to knit a full sock. You can knit a shorty or you can just, you know, cast on this is something else too I want to talk about. Um, you can just cast on like a real ankle sock, even shorter than a shorty, cast on a little ankle sock, work the heel, cast, and then either finish your sock or just bind off an inch or two past the heel if you just want to um, play around with heels. And that's something else that I noticed. There was a, someone did a collection. It's not really patterns, but on Ravelry, you'll see that somebody did a, um, like a study, also kind of a heel study. And what she did and what is also done, I'll show you in the book. Uh, let me get a good page. Yeah, this one's pretty good. What's also done here is, as you can see, she just, Lara Neal just knits the heel. So she casts on, does a couple of rounds, works the heel, does a couple more rounds, and then binds off. So you're getting, so you can just play with the heels. You don't, you're not committed to knitting a full sock if you want to just play with a heel and then plug it into, um, plug it into a sock. So that's, that's another thing that I've been working on and exploring. Um, it's just even a little pattern for that, just like a little gauge swatch type thing, test swatch for different heels. Um, but yeah, so this should be with the testers, with the tech knitter and with the testers very, very soon. And I will get this out to you. I'm just trying to think of a name because my, this has, so let me know, let me know what you think. Um, Cause there's so many patterns that are vanilla socks. So I was trying to come up with something to just kind of differentiate it a little bit, just make it stand out. So let me know what you think. Let's have a little naming contest in the, in the comments down below. This is the No Fear Shorty Sock. Shorty socks that went along with the tutorials here on my channel. Um, I don't know. We'll think of something. Let me know what you think. Let me know in the in the comments what you think. So there you go. Those are my socks, everybody. Um, yeah. And there's also something else I've been working on. I'm going to go grab that in a minute. It's so much fun to play around with different options. And it's interesting, I've done so much, I feel like I've done so much knitting in the last month, but don't, other than one completed pair, I don't, I don't have a lot of completed objects to show you. And it's interesting as a podcaster, I was, I was like, oh, I just want to finish a pair. I don't have enough to share on an episode. And I also think that's what delayed me too from recording. And it's kind of silly because I am, exploring options and testing patterns and knitting different things. So I may not always have a finished pair. And it, again, it's that, that, that pressure I feel like I put on myself unnecessarily. So, and what you all are after are just, I keep shaking the, the table here. What you all are after is just the information on the socks. I, I don't know that there's this, well, Denise, why didn't you finish more pairs than just, you know, one pair? Um, yeah, so it's interesting how we put pressure on ourselves, I think is where I'm going with this. <laughs> uh, yeah, so let me pause. I'm going to show you one other thing I'm working on that I'm really excited about because that will segue me into another book that I'm using. So hold on. So I don't think I could go through this sock exploration and try all of these different heels and play with all of these different sock options without trying 100% wool socks with no nylon. I know what you're all saying. <laughs> what did she just say? You have to have nylon in your socks. Oh my gosh, you have to, have to, have to. You know what? You don't. Did I just say that? Because I've always said the opposite. But I'm, I'm playing around with a new to me yarn. Look at that. It is this beautiful stuff right here. This is called um, Garthanor Organic. 
Sidonia sock. It is organic Romani and Hebridean wool. And this comes from, bear with me a second because I'm not wearing my, grown in South Wales, the Scottish Highlands, and Southwest England, scored and spun in Yorkshire, and hand finished in West Wales. So it is 60% Romani and 40% Hebridean. It feels amazing. And it feels so real and earthy and there's a hint of lanolin in it. So it's, it's kind of got like a, it's not oily, definitely not, but there's a smoothness to it that you know comes from the lanolin. If you, if you have experience with, um, non super wash, like fresh off the sheep kind of thing, kind of yarn and it's fingering weight. So I've already cast on and I'm just playing around. This is a vanilla latte pattern. And I was just playing around with this. I'm actually going to knit this twice. I have two balls of this particular colorway and then I have two other colors. Um, this colorway name is Tryfan, T-R-Y-F-A-N. I apologize if I'm saying that wrong. Please forgive me. It feels amazing. It feels so real. And I think what needs to be done with 100% wool socks is it has to be knit a certain way. This is what I've gathered so far in my experience, um, which segues me perfectly to this other book that was suggested to me, um, The Knitter's Book of Socks. And this is by, this is by Clara Parks. I'm not telling you to run out and buy this book. I know many of you will. <laughs> I'm not telling you to run out and buy it. It is a really amazing resource also. I feel like I have now really rounded out my library with not only good sock pattern books, but with amazing reference books. And I mean, for those of you that are unfamiliar with Clara Park, she is, I feel like she's the voice of one of the many voices, one of the strong voices in the knitting community right now with the books that she's put out. Um, she did a whole book on fleece. It's called The Book of Fleece. And it's, she, she approaches, I find her approach to sock knitting and yarn to be the perfect combination of scientific and sentimental. And it's just the way she writes, what she writes, it's, uh, I love this book so much. So that said, I'm exploring this book and I found a pattern. She tells a little story of a conversation she had with Ann Budd, who was also another incredible um, sock knitter. And after their conversation, they created a pattern called Anna Purna, Anna Purna, designed by Ann Budd. And it was, the challenge was to create a pair of indestructible socks made from 100% wool with no, li no, li no nylon. And it is done with... I'm trying to figure out how I can show it to you. Oh, let me show you this page. Hang on. Here are the socks here, right there. And the socks are done with slip stitches. So there's slip stitches down the leg. And then across the sole of the foot, there are also slip stitches and the yarn is held double. Mind blown. So I am beyond excited this was my this was going to be my test knit with this with this yarn and what i started to do before getting the book what i started to do so this is called this pattern in here is just a vanilla latte so it's i think it's a six by one repeat so six knits one pearl and then once i started working the heel flap what i decided to do was i did a slip stitch heel flap which creates this almost like a double layer of fabric on the inside. But then what I did was the square heel, the Dutch heel, but I continued with the slip stitches in the heel, in the heel turn. 
I'm rather proud of myself for that one. <laughs> um, I wasn't following a pattern. I just did it. And yeah, because I figured that portion right there in the heel, I'm going to poke myself in the needle. This portion of the heel right in here is where is a wear and tear spot where you can get a hole. It's that's a really high stress point. So I decided, well, what happens if you continue with the slip stitches into the heel and across the bottom? That was my thought. And then this book came into my lap where she does it in here. So I thought, whoa, amazing. And I am going to continue because I do want to know what this feels like with just one um, with one strand across the bottom. So I am going to continue with this sock just with one strand. OK, just as a shorty, uh, this is a full length. The vanilla latte pattern is a full length. Here you can see it a little bit more here um, is a full length sock pattern. I just made it into a shorty because I really wanted the yarn to go far. Um, but I'm going to play around with this with one strand and see what, what happens. And then I, I really do plan on wearing these. Um, I know some of you are like, but I thought you didn't wear your socks. I don't always, but I will wear these. It is spring now, but you still have those cool mornings when I'm dropping the kids off at school. So I will be wearing these and um, giving them a little test drive, so to speak, to see how they feel. But just the feel of them feels at the risk of sounding sentimental, it almost feels like I'm visiting an old friend. And that's what I've enjoyed so much about this. This takes me back to before YouTube, before Instagram, before I there was this knitting community, before the followers, before the subscribers, when it was just me sitting in my apartment, even before I was married, just sitting in my apartment, watching Lord of the Rings over and over and over again just playing around with patterns, playing around with yarn and seeing what I can create and what I come up with. And it, so it feels so traditional to me and so familiar. And I just, I love it. I love it so much. So I'm really, really excited to, to finish these. And this yarn came from, uh, this Sidonia yarn is being stocked right now or being carried by the Wooly Thistle. And Corrine reached out to me to give this yarn a try. And um, yeah, I can't wait. So I'm hoping to get this sock finished, at least the one, um, so I can play with that just to get the, well, the pair finished really, really soon. Uh, I'm teaching again with Vogue, I said April 17th. So I really want to get this pair and the mate to this one finished um before the neck before i teach another again so um yeah we'll see how that goes but oh my gosh just i love the feel of it i love the feel of it and you know what this when i was reading way back in the day when i read um the knitter's almanac I think that was the first place by Elizabeth Zimmerman. I think that's the first place where I read about, um, oh no, maybe Knitting Without Tears? One of those two books where she talked about the afterthought heel. And what's amazing about an afterthought, putting an afterthought heel in in a 100% wool sock is when those, the two areas that usually wear out are your heel and your toe. But if you're knitting an afterthought heel, you can very easily pull that out and re-knit your heel. Same thing with your toe. You can rip back to right where the toe decreases start and re-knit another heel. That was necessary, a very cost-effective way back in the day. Would many knitters do that now? No, but just knowing that you have that option to do that is fantastic. I, I, just, I just love that that is an option. Um, I'm knitting it right now just because and it's oh, it, it doesn't snag there's no snagging because it, it is very fibery as you can see there's a big halo or a lot of halo on this yarn and I'm using high high sharp needles which I've talked about before that this the high high sharp doesn't always pair well when you've got a yarn with a lot of halo um, but for some reason it's just it's working I'm not getting any snags I'm not splitting my yarn i mean i'm knitting slowly right now because i'm i'm talking to you all and recording but 
Yeah, it feels amazing. So if you get a chance to sample this, I highly recommend it. I will give a thorough um, chat about this. That's not the word I want, but you know what I mean. I will talk about this in depth uh, again once I've finished my sock. And I'm also... I'm trying to think how many stitches I cast. You know what? I'll talk about it again in detail later uh, because I knew I cast on a couple f few less stitches for this and I'll tell you why later. Um, but yeah. Oh my gosh. This is kind of a long episode, but there was a lot to catch up on. Um, and what I've also been doing is keeping my notes in this. I'm creating a little sock recipe book for myself. Maybe one day I'll share this and publish it. Maybe not. I don't know what's going to happen. This idea just bloomed. And this little booklet, as you can see, has all these beautiful little knitted things, items on here. And it is on the front. It says, oh, the potential. I love that so much. And this is by Katie Green Bean. She's Katie Green Bean on Instagram. I will link to her website down below. I love the size of this notebook. It fits perfectly in my uh, project bag. I can take my notes. And what I'm doing with this is writing down, because I'm using two different books and looking at different patterns, and so many people have also been suggesting different patterns with different types of heels. And I just discovered a um, gusset, a heel flap free gusset sock. It's knit top down, does not have a heel flap, but it does have a gusset. Interesting. So I'm going, so again, I'm finding all of these different resources. So I need to keep track of where they're all coming from. So I'm taking notes for myself. And as I'm knitting these socks, I'm writing down my recipe, what yarn I'm using, how many stitches I'm casting on, approximately how many rounds on the leg, what I'm doing for the heel, heel flap, if there is a heel flap, what heel I'm using, leg, foot, and then toe instruction. So it's not, it's not, it doesn't look like a full pattern. It's just a recipe. And if there's any details then that I need to write out, like the eye of partridge, I have a little cheat sheet for myself in here for that. So it's really handy. This is my, again, my little recipe book. So I don't, and I'm writing down my pages also, like what pattern or page or book I'm getting all of this information from. So this is going to be, this little book is going to be my go-to resource. Yeah, that I can keep with me. Um, and someone, uh, I posted about this on Instagram and someone said to me that they are doing this, is Caleb, who um, is drowning in yarn. He says that he keeps all of his notes on his iPad. And I have an iPad, I've got good notes, but there's something about... And I've tried to do that, but there's something about pen and paper. I think it's part of the processing for me. Part of the processing is writing everything down. So yeah, that's what I'm doing with this. So that is, oh, that's a lot. That's everything. <laughs> so 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 much so thank you all for joining me oh and i know i'm gonna get questions about this too this is my sock artist t-shirt let me see if i can stand so you can see the little ball um i love this t-shirt so much i got this from cafe press so um yeah, and I got this last year, end of last year. So I think it's Cafe Press has a design that you can get this put on different things for yourself. So it should still be there. It should still be available. Um, but yeah, that's it, everybody. I didn't talk about anything really personal. I didn't talk about audiobooks or family or anything. Um, Easter was really lovely. We had a really great time. Our family decided to get together and actually sit at the table together for a meal for the first time in, oh my gosh, since Christmas of 2019. And I am so grateful that we had that opportunity. All of us have been vaccinated uh, with the exception of the kids, of course. Um, but we've all been vaccinated and we just decided it was time and it worked for our family. We are very, very grateful that we had that. Uh, I know many families are have not had that chance yet. They're still waiting. Um, I understand how you're feeling, but I'm really not, but it will come. It will come. We've waited. I think good things are worth waiting for. It's hard and it's awful, but you will get there. We'll get there. So yeah, we'll get there in life. We will get there with our 
with our knitting, with our sock knitting. Thank you for joining me today and chatting about socks. Um, I also want to say thank you again. <laughs> Someone also said in the comments that their husband calls them an overthanker. And if you're watching, <laughs> I am an overthanker. I am happy to be an overthanker and I am thanking everybody for following along, for subscribing, for liking my videos, um, and for donations. Those are still coming in. People are leaving um, tips in my tip jar. So thank you so much for that. Just thanks everybody. Just feeling very, very grateful. Thank you again. And I will see you all again really, really soon. Bye everyone.